The World Health Organization have teamed up with obese health expert Bill Gates, a billionaire tech guru with an unsettling passion for vaccines. This is a needle-wielding nerd who has penetrated more humans than Mick Jagger and Tom Jones put together. The Microsoft founder seems to be the go-to expert when it comes to pandemic control. He's even written a book about it. Here it is. How to prevent the next pandemic. Blimey, haven't we done enough damage trying to prevent the current one? Interesting stuff. Well, that book is on sale now. I'm not sure he's done his homework. Take a look at this. Bill Gates admits we didn't understand COVID had a fairly low fatality rate. What's he on about? It was clear at the start of the pandemic in early 2020 that this was a virus which would be mild or non-existent for most and which would target vulnerable groups, the very old and those with a high body mass index. Talk about rewriting history. And Gates, along with the zero COVID zealots in the WHO, want to create a new vaccine that stops transmission, as do the pharmaceutical industry who anticipate another gold rush of jabs. I suggest we give up our obsession with this virus, make the vaccines uh, that we have available to those in vulnerable groups and let the rest of the public get on with their lives. Because notwithstanding that it's good that we have the jab for those who need it, the worrying number of people with vaccine related injuries and those killed by the jab, even if it's a tiny minority, suggests to me that the vaccine should now be focused on those who risk hospitalisation and death. I have to laugh at the number of people that get COVID and tweet, imagine how bad it would have been if I hadn't been vaccinated. Who knows? You might have been better off. Vaccine king Bill Gates himself has got COVID again after having more jabs in the arm than a 90s rock star. He's tweeted about it. I've tested positive for COVID. He says, I'm experiencing mild symptoms and I'm following the expert's advice by isolating until I'm healthy again. Why doesn't he isolate for the next 10 years? Not a ringing endorsement for vaccine-loving Bill's tiny prick, is it? Now, I'm no expert. And don't forget, I'm triple vaccinated. So an anti-vaxxer, I ain't. But Bill Gates isn't an expert. I'm not an expert. And I'm worried about an unelected tech entrepreneur having such an undue influence on our lives. And I don't mean, by the way, by the invention of that annoying office assistant character on his computers, which still triggers me. And that takes me to the World Health Organization, who after two years of devastating, undemocratic and inhuman pandemic policies have become the World Hell Organization. After all, they sided with Chinese lies and obfuscation at the start of the pandemic, accepting Beijing's bullshit about the origins of the virus. The World Health Organization are in Xi Jinping's back pocket. Doesn't sound very healthy to me. They are the ones who pushed for these ruinous lockdowns inspired by the Chinese Communist Party, which were inconceivable to Western nations before the start of the pandemic and which went against all pre-pandemic planning in the free world. In fact, one of the few countries in the world that ignored this mad policy of lockdowns were the Swedes, whose excess death rate in the course of the pandemic was actually lower than in the three years previously. And now our own beloved government having escaped the clutches of the EU, are considering signing up to a global treaty that will allow this World Health Organization to dictate our lives and radically change our society, our healthcare policies and economy in the event of another outbreak. Someone sneezes in Shanghai or Beijing and it's game over for all of us. There's not much point leaving the EU to retrieve sovereignty if we hand unprecedented and potentially unlimited powers to a dystopian global body that, in my view, got the pandemic so wrong and for which we're now paying the price. Six million people on an NHS waiting list, potentially rising to 12 million, a divided, angrier and poorer society, two trillion quid's worth of debt, uneducated, damaged kids, untreated other illnesses and the cost of living crisis, which is, in fact, the cost of lockdown crisis. Why doesn't Bill Gates go back to doing what he's actually good at, making tatty computers and operating systems like Windows 7, which runs slower than an episode of Midsummer Murders. And the World Hell Organization can do one too. They are the ultimate architects of the failed policy of trying to control a respiratory virus, something that has never been attempted or achieved in human history. 
The scenes of madness playing out in China right now prove just that, with cats and dogs being beaten to death in the streets and millions locked in their homes, many starving and begging for food and provisions. I would love to see the World Health Organization disbanded after the damage they've done. But the least we can do is disassociate ourselves as a country with this now discredited organization, not go to bed with them and fund their land grab of our country and our lives. The World Health Organization can go to hell.